This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Hello, I'm Anjali Istwan. Welcome to The Realty Debate. Lending rates from banks are low. Interest subsidy to lower income groups and even mid income groups is being offered on a platter. There is a tax holiday on profit for affordable housing projects that deliver. It all sounds like a perfect recipe for a great affordable housing boom. But are things really as good as they sound? To discuss this, we are joined by a panel of guests who are the movers and shakers of real estate and real estate financing sector. Let me introduce them. We have Ramesh Nair, CEO and Country Head, JLL India. We have Rahul Sabarwal, COO of VBHC Value Homes Private Limited. We have Vejinath MG, he's the CJM Real Estate and Housing SBI. We have Manoj Gaur, MD Gorsons India and Vice President Credi. We also have with us our knowledge partner Pankaj Kapoor, founder and managing director Lysis Forrest. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. But before we begin this debate, let's take a look at what we feel are the challenges for affordable housing in India. And all of you, please jump in whenever you feel that you want to add to the list. Uh, as the debate progresses, please do jump in. But anyway, here is our list. Ease of approvals, it's a distant dream for housing sector, but unfortunately, government has not been able to realize it even for the much needed affordable housing. Lack of land for affordable housing within city limits, this is probably the single most challenging factor. Lack of funding for land cost and also pre-construction cost as a big chunk of the cost of project is land, zone conversion, construction approvals, etc. Also, one thing that everyone uh, uh, is confused about is the lack of clarity regarding GST and its impact on affordable housing projects. Last but not the least, lack of access to new and efficient tech that cuts cost. So these are the points that we feel are really the big challenges for realty sector, especially in affordable housing segment. Let's uh, start with you, Ramesh. I want to ask you, do you feel that has the government done enough to make the environment a bit more conducive for affordable housing? Anjali, I would say the glass is uh, half full. Uh, this government has definitely shown the intent, uh, especially the last uh, two budgets, uh, whether it was uh, the interest uh, subsidies which the government has been talking about, whether it's the bringing in that ATIB kind of uh, tax holiday for uh, developers, whether it was giving affordable housing uh, in infrastructure status uh, this time around. This government is definitely uh, on the right uh, path, although uh, I think there's a lot more on the execution uh, side required. You summarized it very well. Where is the land available for affordable housing? Where is the infrastructure uh, available for affordable housing? Is approvals uh, happening on time? Interest costs, uh, still is it being uh, passed on uh, to the uh, people who want to uh, buy these homes? So it's uh, a half uh, glass uh, which is full. Uh, still, the government needs to do a huge amount of uh, opportunities. But uh, going forward, we truly believe that in the next uh, one, one year, you would at least see 50-plus uh, uh, developers in the country uh, kind of uh, getting more focused into uh, affordable than ever uh, before. You know, I like it that you're putting a number to it, 50 plus. Uh, but let's speak to you, Rahul, because you've been in this business and you're already doing that. You know the challenges better than anyone else. Do you feel uh, the way forward uh, is better for you as well as people or the developers who would be now show intention to get into this sector? Uh, Anjali, so basically the way we look at it, uh, this sector needs a certain level of mindset and a different mindset. Uh, what we have been able to do in the last seven years of existence is, is kind of build on that mindset. However, the way you summarized it accurately at the beginning of the show, uh, there is not being, uh, there's not enough that is being done at this point of time in our view uh, to really start moving things in the sector. 70 years after the independence of the country, we are still struggling with getting, uh, you know, the proper codes uh, in terms of our land titles. 
approval processes not only take as long as it would take in any other sector uh, in the as far as the affordable housing is concerned but uh, you know even the the, the whole uh, changes that are brought about once approvals are given to a project uh, those, those things start moving as we look at it rera which is supposed to be uh, you know the authority which is set up for uh, yeah, for for uh, helping customers and and kind of regulating the sector is very much silent on various uh, approval authorities and there is no uh, supervision or regulation of the authorities that is done by rera so essentially what you're doing is as a, as a developer the way we look at it there is another level of a, 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 another approval which has come into play uh, in 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 apart from the multiple approvals that we already take Taking forward the issue of uh, developers coming in, uh, 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 Mr. Gaur, uh, we just heard uh, Rahul saying that in fact RERA is turning out to be another problem for them and he's talking about another approval authority. Uh, we of course view it a little differently and so do the consumers but I want to know from you, do you feel that approvals is such a big challenge that developers like you would probably not like to take on something like affordable housing because the time frame, the cost, all that will become a huge problem for you. No, I think uh, the first time the government in last budget ke under jo hai, supply side ko jo hai address kiya. Otherwise, chahe rera le liye, usse pehle subsidy uh, housing loan ke liye liye. Jo consumer tha, uske liye government focus kar rahi thi. But jab tak aap supply side ko thik nahi karenge, I think is budget ke under jo affordable housing ke under चाहे टैक्स रिबेट है चाहे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टेटस देने की बात की है ये दो जो बड़े रिफॉर्म्स हैं ऑफकोर्स द अप्रूवल सिस्टम जो है हम हमेशा से बात करते रहे हैं कि इनके लिए सिंगल विंडो क्लियरेंस होना चाहिए जो सेंट क्योंकि स्टेट का भी एक सब्जेक्ट है लैंड जो है बहुत सारे अप्रूवल्स जो है हमें स्टेट गवर्नमेंट से लेने पड़ते हैं सेंटर से हमने कोशिश करी है कुछ चीज़ों में हम कामयाब भी रहे हैं जैसे एविएशन एक था उसको उन्होंने सेंटर मैप पे अब टोटली कंप्यूटराइज कर दिया है मैनुअल इंटरफेंस कम करी है तो ऑटोमेटिकली 15 डेज के अंदर आपको हाइट क्लियरेंस मिल जाती है सिमिलरली द एनवायरनमेंट इज द बिगेस्ट इशू कि एनवायरनमेंट को भी अभी एक नोटिफिकेशन आया है कि ऑटोमेटिकली जो डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटीज़ हैं वही उसको सुपरवाइज करेंगी एन पार्ट ऑफ द बाई लॉज तो ये इस तरह की चीज़ें कि एक जब आपका अप्रूवल सिस्टम को जो है और जो है ईज करना पड़ेगा एंड uh, जो अफोर्डेबल uh, वाले जो बात है कि अफोर्डेबल सेक्टर का इसका दिया टैक्सेशन के अंदर जो है आई थिंक आर का uh, जो है सर्कुलर एक बार आता है तो इसके अंदर और क्लियरिटी आ जाएगी दैट जो बैंक्स हैं वो एक uh, इसको प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर मान के इसको जो uh, जो लॉन्ग टर्म लोन्स अवेलेबल कराएंगे तभी ये सही उसके अंदर आएगा एंड द लैंड कॉस्ट ऑफकोर्स जो है शहर के अंदर विद इन द बाउंड्री लिमिट्स ऑफ द म्यूनसिपल कॉरपोरेशन द लैंड रेट आर स्टिल हाई एंड इट इज़ द मेन कंपोनेंट इन द अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग ये कुछ चीज़ें और भी हैं लेकिन आई थिंक एक बिगनिंग हो चुकी है एक राइट डायरेक्शन के अंदर बिगनिंग हो चुकी है सो यू आर होपिंग दैट यू विल बी स्ट्राइकिंग द राइट बैलेंस बिटवीन डिमांड एंड सप्लाई बट सिंस द टॉपिक ऑफ फंडिंग वॉज ब्रॉट अप मिस्टर वैजनाथ यू नो I think almost every developer is waiting with bated breath for that RBI guideline to come in because uh, infrastructure status, you know, that was like a magic word which was uttered and everybody was happy about it. But we are all waiting to see how is how is it going to bring down the lending rates? What is the uh, you know what is the sense you are getting right now? What can we expect? Yeah, Anjali ji, definitely the cost of borrowing uh, is one of the important costs. and uh, classifying this affordable housing as infrastructure will help uh, bringing down uh, the cost of borrowing and uh, to that extent the cost of construction will come down and the benefit of that reduction in the cost will be passed on to the ultimate buyer but i would like to add that uh, lot of positive steps have been taken in the area of affordable housing but uh, i would like uh, all of us to have a look at what is this uh, affordable word Uh, the affordable word can be different to different people uh, it is affordable for somebody and afford may not be affordable affordable for somebody else uh, today we have a lot of supply of the uh, you see property there are people who want to buy uh, we all uh, know that uh, nearly 2 lakh 2 uh, uh, crore properties uh, there is shortage uh, in urban areas and around 4 crore in rural areas uh, but there is also lot of supply available in uh, urban areas but why is that although supply is there the demand is there but uh, the de the transactions are not happening this this is because there is gap in uh, you see what one can afford the buyer can afford and the cost this cost needs to be brought down 
in the area of interest cost lot of positive steps have been taken but there are other areas wherein steps need to be taken like the land land is a big cost component this needs to be addressed too because more than 90 percent of this affordable housing requirement is in LIG and EWS segment where the the affordability definitely is a big big challenge so the cost needs to come down the cost i am not saying that the builders have to reduce the cost they they themselves uh, will have their own challenges pankaj uh, i want to bring in uh, bring you in here because uh, you know we are hearing all the developers talking about the fact that yes they have the intention they want to get into affordable housing what is your experience say uh, is it just the fact that affordable housing has not got uh, that kind of a favorable environment earlier or was there never an interest amongst the developers to get into that segment? Yeah, I, I, my own sense is they, uh, there were not enough motivations available for them because motivation was more for doing the luxury and, uh, and the mid-segment demand because that's where, uh, uh, you know, better eligibilities and investor-driven market it used to be. So if you look at my earlier po housing policies, even though uh, talked all around the uh, affordable housing and the need for housing and all those things, they were more pro-investors. It's only in this budget, the first time the government has taken account of it and they realize and they, they remove the, uh, you know, the additional incentive with the investor used to have. So earlier people used to buy the flat on the, for, for investments and their income tax uh, exemptions for investors, if they do the set off against the rental income, the whole interest amount used to get, uh, you know, uh, exempted. And that was additional 7% benefit to the investor. That's why more, of, more, more and more investors were participating in the real estate sector. And they were abusing the need rather than fulfilling the need. In the true sense, so if you look at uh, a country which, was, which has been facing a problem of ho housing shortage also has been facing problem of rising inventory. The prices went up so much and which has created economic imbalance. Today, if you look at Vajinath Singh uh, or, or every other person on the panel has spoken about one important aspect is that cost crisis. Uh, a, we have a huge demand, but I can't really fulfill this demand because my cost itself is very high. And biggest problem of this is the land cost. I see in the current market, uh, you know, affordable housing, especially for EWS and LIG, especially in the metros, cannot be done uh, where it interacts with the livelihood of the people. You know, for affordable housing, someone has to go so far away where there is no desirability for people to go and live because there's no social fabric, no infrastructure, no connectivity. We are a country which is having, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure shortage all around. Now, in that perspective, even though affordable housing need is there, but the, the, especially the supply can come only to the places which are so far away, and that largely because the land cost in the nearby location are very, very high. It doesn't really allow the affordable Absolutely. housing to exist over there. My own sense is unless we see a moderation in land prices, uh, where we ensure there is land is available, uh, for uh, and with which is interactive to the consumer's uh, livelihood and which is closer to the city precinct. Uh, yes. For metro, certainly I see uh, there is... So this is land th challenge. thing I uh, do want to touch upon and uh, I think affordability is another thing that, you know, uh, how do you make anything affordable? Either you bring the cost down or you uh, enable the buyer in buying it. So I think both the aspects have to be worked together. But uh, Ramesh, here, as far as land is concerned, uh, you know, uh, the do, that federal structure of our country. Sometimes what happens is you have these affordable housing policies of some states and then you have a central policy and there is no alignment. So here we, do you feel that, uh, because in some states uh, acquiring land, getting land, there are some incentives being given. But uh, do you feel that that sort of a federal structure actually works to undermine uh, uh, growth of uh, affordable housing sometimes? See, there is uh, a lot of disconnect between uh, the central and uh, state governments when it comes to uh, land as a topic or even uh, affordable uh, housing. If we today look at the tax uh, structure, when I buy a home, close to 30-35% of uh, whatever I pay for goes in different types of taxes for the central and state, whether it's the developer paying or the home uh, buyer paying. So firstly, the government needs to make sure that's taken care of. Second is uh, the delay aspect. Whatever the central government says, at the end of the day, delay happens uh, at the local level. 
just a land which is two years uh, delayed today's uh, even a good developer his cost of capital for land is 20 percent so we are talking of 40 percent uh, of the uh, land prices increasing just because your project has been delayed by two years so these are the kind of things the government needs to look at but again if you look at what has happened over the last few years the positives we need to look at uh, definitely there are enough uh, infrastructure schemes which are happening today which are better than uh, before uh, there's enough uh, land bank today with developers which is not the case uh, 10 years uh, back enough construction technologies which is available where uh, developers can do it uh, faster there's a lot more uh, government uh, intervention uh, what i spoke about uh, earlier on so at least uh, if you look at all these uh, aspects uh, we have set a good foundation for the country to go to the next level if the government can fix these three four uh, points whether it's uh, a better infrastructure uh, land at uh, lower cost, reducing the tax rates and fast approvals. And if the government can do each one of this, the government has shown that they have the intent. Uh, RERA is a big uh, game changer. But if the government can do these things maybe once every six months, once a year, change some of these things, uh, then uh, I'm very, very sure that uh, there's no stopping this industry. You know, I really like this word intent. <laughs> it's 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 something you know which is very positive, and every time we uh, hear it and every time we feel it, we get a lot of positive vibes. So, but you want to say something, Mr. Gaur? Yes. Yeah. The I think the four point are land, then the taxation, the stamp duty, and the technology. I think ये चार चारों चीजों को अगर हम combine करते हैं, तो affordable housing की जा सकती है. और अगर हम अपने neighbour countries को देखें, चाहे Malaysia है, Indonesia है, सभी लोगों ने mass housing के लिए जो टेक्नोलॉजी अवेलेबल कराई डेवलपर्स को प्लस साथ में जो इंसेंटिव है टैक्सेशन के रूप में है या लैंड कॉस्ट के रूप में है प्लस लोकल अथॉरिटी जैसे स्टेट और सेंटर का जो डिसकनेक्ट है वहाँ पे उनके जो डेवलपमेंट चार्जेस हैं या जो लोकल टैक्सेस हैं दैट इज़ वेरी हाई अराउंड थर्टी टू फोर्टी अभी आपने जो बताया जो है उससे इसकी कॉस्ट को जो है कंट्रोल करना बहुत मुश्किल है और जब तक कॉस्ट इसकी कंट्रोल नहीं होगी तो ये अफोर्डेबल सेक्टर जो है अफोर्डेबिलिटी लोगों के लिए क्या है तो वो एक बड़ा एक फैक्टर है कि वो अलग अलग बेट्रोज के या जो सेटेलाइट टाउन्स हैं उसमें वो डिफरेंट तरीके से वेरी करती है तो हमें इस इस चीज़ को देखना पड़ेगा कि कहाँ पे हाउसिंग हो रही है उसके स्टेट के टैक्सेस क्या है सेंटर के टैक्सेस क्या है प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी को जो है किस तरह से uh, हम इसके अंदर ला सकते हैं जो मास हाउसिंग के अंदर कॉस्ट yes. कम करती है टेक इज अज थिंग इवन आई फील एंड आई वॉन्ट ब्रिंग यू इन राहुल बिकॉज डू यू फील uh you are able to access superior technology to bring down costs in a uh, much efficient manner do you what about the duties that are levied in when every time you are trying to bring in uh, superior technology is it accessible enough to you or government should be doing something in that front as well Uh, so Anjali, we, uh, you know, we were one of the first ones in India when we started. We realized that the only way, uh, you know, affordable housing or mass housing can be done uh, is by the use of technology. Uh, labor in our country is is skilled labor in our country is going to be something that is going to have a continuous shortfall as as time uh, progresses, and we we've, we've seen that in the last six seven years. Uh, we actually brought in uh, form technology and and those technologies yes they were slightly more expensive in the in the initial years but over a period of time they have really helped deliver housing at a very very different pace so i agree with the panel that you know if we have to do affordable or mass housing we need to get technologies uh, government needs to do more in uh, surely to to help uh, developers reduce the cost but uh, there there are these are technologies that if you if you actually were to build a large scale township uh, they the cost almost evens out so there is a slightly higher cost that you eventually end up paying but it is it is well worth the the time effort that is required to complete the project and and you know you can actually complete a project in in 12 months vis-a-vis -vis what you would take uh, you know 24 to 30, uh, 30 months in in the conventional sense i absolutely agree that if you have to do mass affordable housing there has to be some uh, you know titanic shift in the way we construct in the way we approach this the current approach has been affordable housing has been done uh, you know in parts as as an extension of um, you know uh, what what uh, what what other developers have been doing in these areas the second thing that you see is a, a lot of affordable housing stock is actually uh, coming from unregulated uh, uh, players which will which probably once rera comes in will kind of give the final product to the customer 
uh, which is of a great quality and that's that's very very important that's that's quite an important point time for a short break on the realty debate when we come back we take the discussion forward and also take a closer look at subsidies given by the government and their reach amongst the beneficiaries